Thank you. All righty. So if you are not, it looks like everybody has first and last names in, which is fantastic. If you are not on mute, I am going to mute you uh, just so there's not a lot of background noise. It's easier for us to work with uh, the chat box as the meeting goes on. So if you have something, a question that you want to ask or a comment, it's easier uh, if you put it into the chat box um, with the exception of obviously board members interrupt me uh, at any time to jump in. So thanks so much guys. And let's call to order the December 8th meeting of the BDL Protection and Rehabilitation uh, District Advisory Board. So um, let's start with the pledge. Stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse me for just a moment. You can say hello and then you need to leave the room. Thank you. Right. We'll find daddy. Thank you. Pardon the interruption, guys. <laughs> Part of the virtual world in the evening. All right. So thanks so much. Um, uh, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Fred, I see. Second, Dave. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All righty. So we'll jump right in with administrative. So we have an upcoming board election. So there are two seats open for New Windsor. And those are three-year terms and um, one seat open in Cornwall for a two-year term. Uh, residents had the opportunity to file nominating petitions that were due last Friday with the Department of Public Works. And the signatures on these petitions were reviewed and verified independently by representatives at a DPW. And the DPW then reports to board members the names of candidates who are to appear on the ballot. So this year, there were two individuals who submitted petitions, myself for the New Windsor seat. So thank you to all the neighbors who signed those for me. And Lawrence Weinberg, who you see waving, um, who is running for the Cornwall seat. So all residents uh, eligible to vote in Orange County are able to vote for both seats. So if you come, you can vote for uh, myself and Larry, and we're both running unopposed for our seats this year. Um, the election will be held 12-14 uh, from 3 to 8 p.m., as has been standard at our community building. So the 14th, 3 to 8 p.m., come cast your vote to show your support. We would really appreciate it. Um, and that being said, the board is very sorry to say goodbye to David Miskovic, who will not be running uh, this time around. But we thank him very much for his service over the past two years. And you're not off the hook with us yet. So I'm sure you're gonna be back for events and we're gonna harass you at home. So look forward to hearing more from us. So thanks so much. Alrighty. And uh, moving on to parking and boat permits. So we talked last month about how we were gonna inventory the boats that are at the reserves. Uh, Tom Lark, who's our maintenance gentleman has done that for us and he has, um, assessed where the boats are, the conditions that they're in, which reserves they're at, and if they are um, permitted. And he submitted this list to the board and we're gonna be working with the DPW to collect abandoned boats and dispose of them properly. So um, you can still get your boat permits at the BDL website. I will link it in the show notes on the YouTube channel. It's also, if you Google Orange County, Beaver Dam Lake, that's our website permit programs right there. We've put it out a lot of different ways, a lot of different times. You don't have your boat stickered, get it stickered. Um, and please winter, like winterize them if you're gonna leave them at the reserves uh, so that we don't have more abandoned boats next year. Um, Erica, do we have data on what the boat inventory was? So how many total boats and what percentage were not stickered? Um, I have it, but I, I have it done up in front of me. Okay. So I can you. get that to you, yep. Um, and the next item is our boat launch, which is over on Reserve 8. It's where people put, it's the big reserve where people put their pontoon boats in the water. Um, it's been brought to our attention that the boat launch needs another revamp. So we attempted to add some crushed stone last year um, for people to launch their boats, but realized that it kind of requires more of a concrete pad there. 
Um, so we will plan to get that done in the spring so that we don't have issues with vehicles getting stuck on reserve eight, trying to get the boats in and out of the lake. So uh, stay tuned for more on the boat launch project reserve eight come the springtime. And do, do we have an idea, Eric, if that'll require us going out for bid on that? It will not require us to go out for bid on that. Okay. Um, we have Perfect. some lumber that we can make, a, you know, a small cast for it, and then we can just get the materials. We also had a community volunteer offer to help us with it. Excellent. So, Thank you. Yep. I'm seeing a comment, finishing the, but fixing the boat launch would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We're true. We tried to do it with the crushed stone. We thought we could get away with it, but um, we need a little bit more than that. So we heard you, we noticed it, and we're planning to move forward with that um, over on Reserve 8. And with that said, I will toss it to Wally to talk about uh, the Lake Health Committee and some of the things that you have going on there. Okay. I'm not going to repeat anything that we have already previously discussed back in November. It seems like yesterday we went over those. Uh, basically, for the first part, which is the cattails and the drawdown, as I'm sure you recognize right now, the drawdown started on uh, Monday. Erica did a good job. She sent out the communications to the residents, giving people more than adequate time to get their pontoon boats off the water to prevent any damage, and also to ensure if you had any personal items on the lake to make sure they were secured so they don't get damaged. So hopefully everybody did that. Uh, the drawdown started on Monday. As of this uh, today at 3 p.m., we were down about 12 inches. So that's we're probably pulling down around six inches a day right now, which is a lot faster than I would have expected. So right now we'll probably make the target of 18 inches by uh, tomorrow night, or no, no later than Friday, if everything keeps going the way it's going with no additional inputs coming into it, which is good. Pond and Lake Connection, they plan to do a site visit on Friday to see where the drawdown, pro how the drawdown progress is making. Right now their schedule and plan is to begin on Monday and they expect it to take no longer than one to two days. So they own that part of it. Um, as everybody else is aware through the communication during this drawdown period, if you are a lakefront property owner, it gives you an opportunity to go out there and clean your area in front of your dock. One more chance if you felt you missed it because you had the three years to do it before, this gives you another week to do it again. Um, if you plan on having any contractors come in to do any type of work, uh, a couple of things on that, make sure they obviously have a permit to be able to support the work that you're doing if applicable. And Eric has highlighted a couple of times, make sure the contractors don't leave any items in the lake in case lake level does start to rise. If we have any weather events taking place. Uh, anything to add on that, Eric, before I keep going? Nope, you're good. Okay, so that takes care of what we're finishing in 2021. Uh, 2022 is pretty much getting the contract in place with whoever that's going to be to be doing our uh, treatments if we need it for algicide and herbicide. Um, right now, we, uh, we the board did everything we can do relative to putting that contract together as we planned earlier. That's with the DPW. They are very aware of that. We communicated with them and verified they have everything from us and it's with them to get that process going to get the uh, uh, RFBs out right now, request for proposals. So that is ongoing. So that takes care of 21 and 22. Lake testing. Right now we have a follow-up meeting. One of the action items that came out of Lake Health meeting the other day is relevant to the lake testing. So we put together a small subgroup, if you will, at a Lake Health committee to do a follow-up with uh, Northeast Aquatics to discuss the testing, to discuss their work that they've done so far and say, what is the data telling us? And where do we plan to go from here to try to get a bigger picture relative to testing? We have a, that meeting is scheduled for 12, 13, which I guess is next week. And there's a small subgroup, like I said, of Lake Health Committee members that'll be on that call. And we'll report out on that later on. Uh, other than that, right now, I'm making a decision right now. We're not gonna do a December Lake Health Committee because we're doing that other meeting. And there's not a lot of really discussion to take place. So let's hold off on doing the meeting in December. We'll start back up in January <clears throat> with Lake Health Committee. I'll continue to communicate with the Lake Health Committee with emails, giving any updates, what comes out with our phone call with Northeast Aquatics next week. That's that. And other that we've already discussed in great detail about the uh, fishery stocking, I'm not gonna, there's nothing else to add other than the dominoes are lined up and we'll push the first one here in January. And that is the fishery stocking. And that completes the Lake Health Committee updates. Any questions at all? Wally, at this time, I'm aware of 
only one person who has gotten DEC permission to do anything with equipment in the lake. Okay. Um, is there, if there are any others who are intending to uh, work more extensively on your lakefront property this week um, and you have DEC approval for what you're gonna do, please just let us know. And then that way, when we get all the texts and calls and things like that, uh, we have some awareness of what's going on at your property. Uh, you can email bdlboard at gmail.com and just give us a heads up that you've received approval and who you're working with for that. Just so again, when we, we get a lot of concerned residents um, and some of it's completely on the up and up and we're aware of it. And some of it, we just don't know unless you tell us. So um, that would be really helpful if you have work that's planned in that way. Okay, Eric, I'll talk to you offline about this. I wanna make sure I, under, I think I'm 99% sure I know who that is that has the permit. I just want to verify I got that right. So we make sure that we have clear communication going back and forth so we know when the refill is going to take place so there's no surprises. Yes. Um, I did get a question in the chat box from Stephen Hamilton. Did I understand that fish restocking starts in January? Wally, do you want to address yeah, just that? For, just for clarification, Steve. Um, we reported out last month, basically, it's a couple steps process. The process will start in January, that is correct, which is applying for the DEC permit to restock. So we will do that in January. Um, from there, we're gonna actually do some testing in February and March relative to saturated oxygen inside the water. We are also gonna need to go out and find, we need to nail down whether we have to actually go a proposal for bid to actually restock it. We have a $15,000 budget to do that. We wanna nail that down. We wanna finalize the company we're gonna deal with in the February, March timeframe. And then a basic general guidance throughout the industry everywhere, Steve, is that you do not start putting fish in before the spring, which they call that as being uh, April and May. So yes, it starts in January, but we actually won't put fish in until April or May. Thank you. I have another question from Allison. What happens with the cattails that are cut down? Originally, they were to be pulled up on the land to dry, will be hauled away by Rossini. What's happening now? Okay, want me to take that? Okay, Go basically, Allison, what they're going to do is it's not really cutting them as you would think, like where you have a whole cattail laying there. It's more like they're going over with a mulching mower. So it's going to be just a bunch of little pieces of debris that are going to basically be laying there in the bed. Um, uh, if the homeowners choose, they could rake them out and have them hauled away if they have the ambition to do that. Or if you have any excavating going on, they could take that out at the time when that's uh, going on. But right now, they, when they cut them down, it's just going to be small particles like when you mulch your grass. It's just going to be uh, small particles, which they are not going to be removing. It's just going to be left there. It's a net sum zero relative to what kind of uh, organics are being added back into the lake, though. Thank you. Um, Allison, I think you're, you're probably the, one of the more special cases that we have on the lake. So if we could talk offline, that would be helpful. Uh, Jason, I see you said hauling away would be best so it reduces the excess nutrients. Yeah, we, we actually talked to the vendor extensively, Jason, based uh, Fred uh, came up with the same exact question. And we did go back to the vendor and say, does he have the capability of doing that? He said, no. We said, do you have a, uh, another equipment alternative that you could deal with or a sub vendor you could deal with to get that accomplished? And the answer came back no again after they looked into it. So yes, we totally agree. We have a chance to remove, reduce nutrients, but it, the way we're proceeding right now, we are not going to remove it, but then it's going to be a net sum zero because what happens with cattails every year, they grow, they die, they go right back into the water. So it's a net sum zero for the way we're dealing with it. Thank you. If anyone else, else has any questions, now's a good time on what Wally just said. Now is a good time to put those questions in the chat box. Unless it's a board member, then in which case, please unmute yourself. All right. I'm not seeing any questions about that now, but if you have them as we go, ask and we'll we'll circle back at the end. Um, thank you, Wally. Appreciate that. Um, and another item, uh, our next item is community events. Oh, I do see which area are you cutting? Um, We've gone, we've gone over that a little bit a couple of times. Wally, do you want to address what areas they're actually going to be cutting cattails? Yeah, Lee, to answer your question specifically, 
prior to doing anything, we had took a tour around the perimeter with the vendor and uh, direct communication with homeowners as well. The goal was to be able to open up all the areas that is lakefront property owner, so it's not being blocked by cattails with the understanding working with the property owner that you're going to try to live in balance with nature because cattails are a positive thing also. So we're taking out those cattails to maximize or optimize the usability of lakefront for the property owners, yet trying to leave some around. So I, I, it's not a specific answer. I could say the north area, the south area, it's all around the perimeter. It was piecemeal based on what the homeowners wanted to do. You know, Wally did a great job talking to, and other board members did a great job talking to homeowners to figure out what they were comfortable kind of taking and leaving so that we could be strategic with that. So I really appreciate the time um, and the advice from the Lake Health Committee on that. So thank you very much. Alrighty. Um, the next order of business is community events and we have a lot coming up. <laughs> Um, so the first one is check your email for information on the first annual Beaver Dam Lake Holiday Lights competition. If you'd like to enter your home, you're going to submit your address to bdlboard at gmail.com um, and let us know your address. We'll add you to the map. We'll make uh, this. This should be done by December 12th. So send me your address by December 12th. We're gonna do a quick little turnaround. And by December 14th, um, we're going to have maps available. I'll email them out. I'll also have hard copies in the boxes outside the community building. Um, so you can stop by and get a map and a voting form. Residents are gonna vote and determine the winners of three categories. So we have, uh, it's a wonderful life, which is uh, most traditional. Uh, Island of Misfit Toys, which is best use of inflatables. And, the Clark Griswold, so like the most lights. Um, when I sent this out yesterday, I wasn't expecting such an overwhelming response of addresses. So it's sure to be uh, an awesome community event. Hopefully it'll brighten the neighborhood. You have another weekend to get out, add decorations. Um, we've also had volunteers of prizes. We've had, uh, you know, real estate agents ask us if they could sponsor some things. Uh, so we're trying to put it together on the back end. It became bigger, quicker than I expected. So really appreciate uh, the work of community volunteer, Christine Little. Uh, she has brought you such greatest hits as the yard sale for the last two years. So uh, she's awesome at, uh, at coming up with these things. So I really appreciate her efforts. Uh, if there's anything that you wanna bring or donate to that, uh, please let me know. Um, that being said, uh, on December 19th, you have to have your stuff in, you have your voting form in by 5 p.m hard copies at the community building and the instructions will be on the voting form. And then that night at 8 p.m. we will announce it via email and I'll put it on the residents of Beaver Dam Facebook page. Um, and so we can all celebrate the winners and make sure they get their prizes. Um, when you drop off your voting form, we are asking for folks to donate non-perishable food items or, or toys. And I'll, I'll toss to uh, Larry Weinberg to kind of talk about what we're gonna do there. All right, thank you, Erica, you can hear me, yes? Okay, so uh, in the spirit of holiday giving and this great momentum that we have in the community, um, Erica and I and the board have been discussing things that we can do to add more value and really, really um, finish up strong this year. So we came up with the idea of a uh, food drive and then combination uh, toy drives. So I contacted the Country Kitchen's Food Pantry in Washingtonville. They do uh, sit within our zip codes for um, specific uh, feeding programs. And uh, they were very uh, excited and happy to hear that we would be able to uh, do this event and support their needs for food. So uh, I do this for a living uh, as far as food rescue and helping out food pantries. So I really wanted to uh, jump in and be sure that we got on board with this in a timely manner. Hence the reason that we're uh, pushing to get this done within the next uh, few days to maybe put something together. The board will all try to discuss this at some point so we can drill down the details. So in a nutshell, the reason we were talking about just doing a food and a toy drive is when I was speaking to Country Kitchen 
uh, they, uh, Country Kids Food Pantry. They did explain that if people don't want to donate food, that they could also use unwrapped toys to help brighten up the holidays. Here's the problem that we've come across is that since we're starting a little bit late on this, because we have so many other things going on, we're going to miss their holiday food distribution, which is going to be on the 15th. It's coming up very quickly. We won't be able to get things together by that time. So we're going to push for two weeks after that to be the distribution date where we will, uh, whatever we collect, uh, we will either have the country kids come and get it, or I will um, borrow my work van, pick up all the stuff and deliver it to them courtesy of the Beaver Dam Lake community. So here's what we're asking, at least in a rough detail right now. So non-perishable items uh, are the best items to donate for now because we're not going to require refrigeration, they're not going to spoil, and they're good things that will hold up at somebody's house for a long extended period, even if they're not going to use them for this holiday season. As far as the toys go, uh, unwrapped toys, appropriate toys, of course, um, and they can take those and hand them out at their leisure. Um, as the board will discuss, we also uh, may try to search or uh, reach out to anybody who's really struggling this season in our particular community uh, of the Beaver Dam area, and maybe we'll be able to help them with some uh, surprise gifts and toys and things if they're not able to do that for themselves. What we have proposed is that we would put a bin outside of the community building, a sealed bin to prevent the food from being uh, destroyed by weather. And either um, our maintenance person could go every day uh, when they're doing their rounds and clear out that bin and bring the food inside so it doesn't freeze or you know, potentially a raccoon gets over there and knocks a bucket over. So we would ask that people would stop by the community building and donate non-perishable items. What's non-perishable? Could be cereal, could be stuffing, could be canned goods that are not dented. Please, I urge you to not make this um, something to clear out your pantries of very old and expired food. We don't wanna do that, okay? So there is a very reasonable time frame that non-perishables are good past the date, but if we're going to donate as a community, I definitely want to make sure we have put our best foot forward. As we approach the 29th, which is the date where we're going to do the donations, I may be able to uh, work with some suppliers that I have to get in some fresh perishable goods also to the country kids. And that will be something I'll spearhead as well. So really what I just want to say is be generous, be kind. It's the, it's the season of giving. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you have the ability to do so, man, what a great idea to help out your community. There's so many food insecure people you may not know. Maybe there are people who are struggling and gonna have to make choices this year. You know, do we, do we have the food on the table that we need or do we keep the lights on? You may not know what's going on, but let's just as a community do our best. Talk to your neighbors. I know not everybody is on here right now. Um, I don't know if we can do anything monetarily, Stephen, uh, because uh, that would have to go through Erica. I know we're not allowed to hold on to funds in hand. Maybe we could do that. Uh, maybe we could accept a donation and use that to purchase some food for this event. That would be an Erica's a ball in Erica's court for that. Um, so. Erica, do you want to jump in right now and mention that? Or should sure. I keep uh, how about this? How about what we do is we firm up the details and we can share it on the email and we can share it via Facebook. Um, that way people will know what we would like donated, when, and where outside the community building we can set something up. So Great. Uh, we'll send out and we have, it's wonderful. We have 25 folks on this call, but we have 800 and a little bit less than 820 homes in our community. So let's try to get a wider reach. Right. Right. So spread, spread the word, you know, spread the word. So, you know, the idea is we, we have a great community and we want to keep on building this positive momentum that we have. And, um, you know, with Erica doing such a fabulous job at all this, I wanted to take some of the pressure off of her because she had talked about this idea and I wanted to be sure that, uh, you know, I could jump in there and, and help out. Um, so I'm just going to shift gears right now because, again, we're not finalized on the details of that 100%, but it's going to be time sensitive. So 
just look for some details within the next few days because we may we have to get the rubber to the road within the next week or less in order to collect an, enough food to actually make an impact. Okay, I'm just going to shift to one other thing that I really um, perhaps if we can identify those in need directly. I, hey, Chris, um, I can't see your whole comment, but uh, perhaps if anybody knows or wants to send in an email of somebody who they know is in need, we may be able to take a one off and, you know, help that family directly. That's something we can discuss. So um, go ahead, Erica. Yep, that, so let us figure out because we, we do have some rules around what we can right. collect and, and how to go about it. So um, definitely stay tuned for more information, which we'll send out via email. My pleasure. Great idea. We're really excited to do something positive for the community and also have a lot of fun with uh, the the Christmas and holiday season here. In no Bay. doubt. So thank you so no much doubt. for your time and effort around right. that. Um, um, there was just one more thing I was going to cover, right, with the uh, poop scooping thing. Uh, let, me, let me hold off on that okay. just for a minute. I just have a couple more things under no community events. Thank um, you. But yeah, so we'll circle back to that. Unfortunately. Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> so the, the other, we have currently a knitting and crochet group that uses our building. We have a Girl Scout troop that uses our building and now we have a Boy Scout troop that would also like to use the building. Um, they're working on getting their certificate of insurance to us right now as the other groups have done. Um, I would just like to know if that's something that the board is okay with. Um, it, it, Boy it, Scout Eric, troop using the building. Yeah, Eric, I'll, that's all I'm always going to do. Let's make sure we're totally in line with uh, local law eight of 1991, which is our current guidance for any of that, specifically in this, uh, the special event section. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we went through this um, with the Girl Scout troop that meets there, and we have had the Boy Scouts meet there in the past. So I okay. know that they particularly adhere to that policy. Also, um, many of the troop, most of the troop, members are residents here in Beaver Dam Lake. So there okay. are own kiddos. And the Boy Scout troop is open to all residents, correct? Um, joining the Boy Scout troop would be open to, um, yes, as long okay. as you would go through I'm, the Boy Scout troop. I'm just going through the words that uh, specifically show I support the fact that we're meeting in the spirit of the local law 1991. Basically, there's only two parts to that. One is you can't rent it and it can't be used for a private function, which is different than what we're talking about. This is a special event. And the second part is it has to be open to uh, everybody within Beaver Dam District, which means by that, if you have a son who, or anybody wants to join the Boy Scouts, they can do that. So therefore you met criteria number two. Thank you. Uh, any board members have concerns regarding a Boy Scout troop meeting in our building? No, I'm all for it. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay. Anybody opposed to the Boy Scouts meeting in the building? Maybe I should ask that. No, I'm good with it also, sorry. Great, thank you. All right, so we'll let them know that that works. Um, to make it clear then too, Dave, you're online, are you good? Absolutely. Um, okay. I don't, I, don't see, I don't see any issues with um, these types of groups meeting there at all. Okay, good. We don't have to hunt you down then. The, oh, uh, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Kevin on by chance? Um, I do not think that he is on yet. He was okay. going to be late for the meeting tonight. Um, that being okay. said, I may tag some board members who also just agreed that this was a good idea uh, to let the Boy Scouts in and out of the building the first couple of times so that we can make sure everything is all set up for them. So thank you guys. Um, and the last thing under community events is we are working on a possible tree lighting event at the community building. This is still a little bit drafty, uh, stay tuned. But if you happen to know Santa personally or have access to Santa um, and he would be able to visit our community, you could please contact me at bdlboard at gmail.com, Facebook private message me, would love to get in contact with Santa and have him at our event. So please let me know if you do have that special connect. Er Erica, just to flag your attention to this, the elf on the shelf behind you is throwing a message at you there. This is Snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and he's making a mess in my house every night. <laughs> Whoever invented this thing is not invited to anything. Um, all righty. So that should cover all of our community events. Um, moving on to ice safety. So it's that time of year again. Um, ooh, I see somebody in the background. Mr. Don, look. He's there. <laughs> Um, it's ice safety time again. It's cold. It's winter. Um, I'm going to be sending this as a follow-up email. So it's more than just our small intimate group that gets this information. But um, just a reminder, ice thickness is not tested on Beaver Dam Lake. Areas of thinner ice are very likely to be present. Uh, caution is advised anytime you enter frozen or open water. Um, Ice thickness is not uniform in any body of water. It can vary day to day uh, for a myriad of reasons, air temperature, water temperature, sunlight, et cetera. Um, because of these variables, it's not feasible to determine the conditions on every part of the lake on every winter day. Therefore, residents are responsible for determining ice safety uh, independently for them and their families and their accompanied guests. Uh, please be safe and practice extreme caution this winter. Also note, there's no gas powered motors permitted on or in the lake. So that includes our snowmobiles, quads, and for the love of God, please no motor vehicles on the lake. Um, if you see it, call the police. Do not Facebook message or reach out to me via email. The board's not a security force. And emailing a board member will only delay the complaint because we are just going to call the local authorities ourselves. Um, it's my sincere hope to not have to pull another vehicle out of the lake bed. Um, and God forbid somebody gets seriously injured. Um, that would be the worst case scenario, obviously. And we don't want to see that happen here in Beaver Dam Lake. So please, please practice ice safety. I'm going to send out some links that make it clear on how to kind of do that. Um, really important. So if at all possible, when it's deemed safe in certain areas, we would look forward to hosting ice skating in a safe area and we'll explore all the ways to make that happen this year. Um, we need, well, we're going to end up needing volunteers for things like this, and it will likely be something that gets kind of put together on the fly as, a, you know, as the lake freezes and ice is available. So stay tuned. We'll reach out to you. Um, you know, maybe it's a, sh a shoveling event, maybe it is a, um, you know, battery operated snow blowing event. So we'll have to figure that all out, but, um, stay tuned. We would love to be able to do ice skating and please practice ice safety this winter. That's all I've got in terms of ice safety. And then I will toss it to, um, Eric, unless anyone has anything else about that. Go ahead, Wally. Eric, a quick question. Are the postings adequate right now? They're on the reserves relative to the ice going on the ice. That's a good question. I will have to double check that. We'll have Tom look at it. I know we have some extra signage too um, in the building that can be used if it's okay. not yet. Thank you. Yep. Um, any other questions about ice safety? Fred, I see you. Go ahead. It's not about ice safety and maybe I missed something, but on the drawdown, um, would like to remind everybody how long this drawdown is going to be so that they, the residents can know what time they have to get out there and do something about it. Wally? Yeah, Fred, just to say what we said earlier, the basic the drawdown started on Monday. Right. They're down 12 inches right now. It dropped about uh, six inches in two days. I would expect tomorrow to be down pretty close to our target level until later in Friday. Uh, Pond Lake Connections coming out on Friday to validate that they're ready to come out with their equipment on Monday. They'll be here. And then Monday, they expect to take one to two days. Um, during all that time, you could be doing whatever you want to do at the lakefront. So when do they anticipate refilling? That's what I'm getting to. We're going to stay, we're going to leave it open for one week after we're complete. And then after that, we'll start closing up and we will send out a communication. So the answer to your question is you have about a week. Thank you. All right. But right now, if you go out there and look at your lakefront, it's actually down very far already. It is. Yeah, so you could actually, if you have much work you want to do, you could actually start doing it now. The other thing we can do, just thinking, is we can use the road signs to let folks know when the lake is refilling also. So we'll put it out electronically, but we'll also put it out 
you know, physically on the, the standing sandwich signs, if that's something you think would be helpful. Um, let me know. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, and please don't leave your tools in the lake bed. We don't want submerged tools or equipment. All righty. And moving on to board members forum. Uh, Larry, did you want to talk about um, your issue with the cleanup? Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, we're all involved heavily here trying to uh, build a better community as we're really excited about that. You know, all the great momentum I keep on mentioning, but on occasion, you know, we're looking at our Facebook page and we see that there's some people who've got some challenges and one of them got, got posted uh, recently about dog poop. Okay. I know we have a great community for walking dogs. There is no doubt about it, man. We've got great streets, great hills, uh, a little bit of traffic. Sometimes you got to dodge those cars, but look, it's the law to scoop your poop. It's 1978 law. It's up to a $250 fine if you don't do so. Now, I don't think there's anybody who's on this call and on this Zoom call and taking the time to participate in this meeting is that, that is creating this problem. But if you see something, say something respectfully. If somebody's not picking up after their dog, you don't have to go and have a fight with them. Bring them a bag, okay? From my rec uh, memory recollection, the little library might have even had a thing for dog bags uh, attached to it. Is that correct, Erica? The little Beaver Dam Library? You yeah, I also, I also would like to point out that there aren't dogs allowed on the reserves because it, there's a difference, right, between the roads, which are not our kind of jurisdiction, and the reserves that definitely are our jurisdiction. So, um, in addition to what Larry is saying about picking your dog's um, excrement off of, you know, lawns and things that you pass, dogs are not allowed on the reserves unless they're a service animal, um, and the fines are even steeper uh, per our bylaws if you don't pick up your dog's stuff. Yeah, so, thank you. Thanks so much. Very, very simple. So look, dog waste, pet waste, it's bad for the environment. It's bad for people's health. You get hookworms, parasites, your pets can get sick. Uh, and on a, on a very similar uh, thought process, again, um, we're looking at lake health and dog waste will also um, um, hurt water quality with uh, rain and runoff. And it will uh, also help with uh, you know, eliminate more nutrients for algae blooms and all that kind of weed growth. So I did research this just to be sure that I wasn't speaking out of school. It's a problem that's easily solved. Uh, we have a great community. Let's just clean it up. If you see something, say something respectfully. But again, if people are not going to do it legitimately, there is up to a $250 fine and it's real. I'm not making it up. There are places that will have a thousand dollar fine. So enough of my soapbox about that. I just wanted to mention it because it was a post about somebody's shoes getting ruined and their kids walking through it at the bus stop. So let's get together as a team and eliminate this. Thank you very much. I'm done. Thank you. All righty. Um, do I have any other board members with questions, comments, and concerns before I toss to residents? I see a no from Colette. I see a no from Dave. I see a no from Larry. I see a no from Fred. I see a no from Wally. Yes, thumbs down from Wally. All right, great. Um, so I will open it up to residents for questions. If you have anything to add, please put it in the chat box now. Don't see anything. I'll give it one more minute. Silence is golden, somebody said, right? <laughs> All right. And I'm sorry for inundating everybody with emails. You're going to get another one about the election and then another, you're going to get a couple of emails from me. So I try to, I try to keep them as uh, short and sweet as possible. So I apologize if you're inundated. We've got a lot going on right now with the drain down and the election and the community events. So we appreciate your patience. 
All right. Seeing nothing else in the chat box. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Fred. All in favor, I saw everybody's hands. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for a great meeting. We are adjourned. <laughs>